I retrofitted my van from looking like this to looking like this so I could live out of it 100% self-sufficiently. And here's how I did it in less than one week with less than $250. Hey, how you doing? It's Neil and on this channel, I show you side hustles and info on how to make money with the goal of traveling the world. If you watch much of my channel, you know I'm all about finding creative ways to save money for the things that are really important to me. So when I bought this dark blue Ford Econoline van, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and avoid the really expensive renovations that lots of people do. I'm also a full-time student, I have a part-time job, I run an e-commerce business, so I didn't want to have to be spending six hours a day doing carpentry for like two months. That's why I found a van that I wouldn't have to do too much work to and I used a lot of material that I already had. This van already pretty much had a bed and that's gonna save me a ton of time and money, which is great. And then I thought about what else I needed. I knew I wanted that bed. That's pretty essential if you're gonna camp or live out of it. I wanted a heat source even when the car's not running, energy and lights when the car's not running, a water source, a way to cook, and of course, the most important thing, Netflix. A bathroom would be really sweet, but that's not really feasible in my space. So I do have a porta potty available if I need to bring that along, but hopefully I'll be able to find bathrooms along the way. I'll take you through exactly what I decided on to fulfill all those needs that I just talked about and we'll add up how much that all costs as we go. Hopefully you can get some helpful info out of this video if you're looking to convert a camper van at some point in your life or if you're just interested in seeing what I did. And if you do enjoy these videos, make sure to hit that like button because it does help out with my channel more than you'd expect. With that said, the first step of my renovation was to fix up some pretty simple construction issues in the build and I got some color matched paint to fix some areas where it was chipped, but then I realized you're not actually supposed to use spray paint in the cold, so I'll have to wait a couple months for that. Also, my mom gave me a little crash course on how to sew, and I fixed a cushion that was torn. Not bad for my first time if I don't say so myself. That's right, ladies, he can sew. <laughs> now it was time to work on the electricity in the van. I bought a 12 volt to 110 volt inverter, which takes the energy from the car's cigarette lighter and turns it into the more powerful electricity that you would find in a normal wall outlet. That inverter only set me back about $30, and then fortunately I had this nice and big power bank that I can charge out of the inverter while driving, and then use to power some other things while I'm parked. Also it has jumper cables attached to it, so if my car battery dies, I won't need to go find someone else with another car so I can get my car back up running again. I did I already have this, but if you're looking to buy a new one, don't get scammed on power banks. A lot of them with this amount of power cost a lot more, so you should look up the actual number of milliamps you want, and then look for a good deal on those milliamps. Also, use something like Amazon as opposed to eBay, because every seller on eBay lies about their milliamps, and eBay just doesn't do anything about it, so you're not going to be getting what you think you're getting, and I will have Amazon links in the description for most of the things that I talk about today. And now that I had a electricity, the next step was lighting. The van has some cool purplish string lights, but unfortunately those only work while it's running. And then it has some other lights above each passenger seat that do work at all times. I just don't want to run the risk of leaving them on too long and draining the battery. So I got this LED light rod that's advertised for use under cabinets, and it's actually exactly what I need because it has a long battery life itself, and then I can just recharge it with a micro USB for my power bank whenever I need to. I set it up with Velcro all across the roof so I can move it to different places and then I can take it off its little magnet if I want to hold it in my hand or just wave it around like a lightsaber. It cost me under $25 so if I decide I want more light I'd consider getting a second one in the future although I think it does a pretty good job on its own. I live in New England and it's really freaking cold here so I need a source of heat apart from just idling the car because that's pretty ridiculous and electric heaters also take a lot of energy to work so they wouldn't work out of my power bank. So I decided to go with one of these little Mr. Buddy heaters, which uses propane for fuel. It cost me $73 and I'll call it $100 to include like seven cylinders of propane. Plus I found this cool hack on YouTube where you take the grate off of it, flip it around, and then you can cook with a pot or pan on it. I do have a camping stove that I can use as well, so depending on the trip, I'll probably bring that along too. But if you don't have one or you're looking to save space, this knocks out two of my requirements in one. 
Ooh, cold. <laughs> this heater is made to turn off before you run out of oxygen, and supposedly that would happen before you died of carbon monoxide poisoning. But I did get a carbon monoxide detector just in case, because I don't really think that's something you want to play around with. I kept it super simple with the water supply by using this camping water container that I had. And the benefit to that is it's flexible plastic. So once I run out of water, it doesn't really take up any space. Then I repaired this broken wooden thing, which will work great as a table, a space to eat off of and also I can just put the heater on it to prevent it from burning anything and now it was time for the most important part of the entire van the Netflix I bought a refurbished Amazon fire stick light for the car's TV which cost me 25 bucks and that has Netflix Hulu Disney Plus all of that and of course to power it I can either use my portable battery or run it out of the inverter when the car is running then the last step was to make the bed up so it would actually be comfortable to sleep in and all that. So I bought this mattress topper, cut it down to the queen camper size bed and put the rest of the bed fittings on it. I've used the same type of mattress topper before and the wave design on it is just super comfortable. I legitimately like it better than my bed at home. So if you're ever looking for a mattress topper, I would definitely suggest the wave design. It's just like super comfortable. <laughs> and once that was down, I really have everything that I need to travel and potentially live out of this van long term. To review, I fixed up some sections with damage. I got an inverter and a power bank for electricity. I got a rechargeable bulb for 24 hour lighting. I got the Mr. Heater Buddy with a carbon monoxide detector for heat during the winter, a flexible camping container for water, an Amazon Fire Stick for Netflix, and a mattress topper for a comfortable bed. Overall, I ended up paying less than $250 for this entire renovation, but it is good to keep in mind that I already had some some of the things I used. So if you're looking to do a similar build, one of the biggest costs that isn't included here is the power bank, which would cost about $200 if you were to get one new. If you're looking to experience the hashtag van life, but you don't have a ton of money, time, carpentry experience, anything like that, I think a great way to go is to get one of these older conversion vans because while it's not exactly made for living out of, it is a lot closer to that than the empty white van that you have to build from the the ground up and it's a really cheap option because like it already comes with the bed so any increase in the price over just a white van really is covered by the bed that it already has now I decided to keep these two back seats here because I wanted to be able to drive around other people but in the future if I wanted to add a little kitchenette with like a sink and a better stove burner thing I could definitely take out these seats and put that in in their place I'm not sure about all my plans yet because I have to work around COVID restrictions and stuff like that. But I know I want to do some traveling this spring and I'm really excited to get on the road. So if you're interested in following my journey, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Also, don't be afraid to comment what I did wrong or what I could like improve on because this will always be a work in progress and I'd love to add improvements to the van as I go. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new and I'll see you next week.